This is the antechamber, looking exactly as it did when Howard Carter found it. Humanity has been captivated by the intriguing realm of ancient Egypt for centuries. With a three-millennium history, this civilization has woven an elaborate tapestry of fascinating facts that amaze, inspire, and enlighten. Under the pyramids and beyond the hieroglyphics is a treasure mine of fascinating facts that would raise even Cleopatra's eyebrow. Join us for the 50 lesser-known facts about ancient Egypt you didn't know. Number 50. Egypt wasn't always desert. The terrain of Egypt is generally depicted as a desert. During the Ice Age, the Egyptian and Sahara deserts formed a verdant expanse covered with grass, trees, and tranquil lakes. The ancient Egyptians' forefathers prospered as hunters and farmers in this lush land, molding their primitive life. A changing climate triggered a dramatic transition as the Ice Age ended. Over generations, the rich meadows gave way to a parched, hot desert. Both people and nature set out on a journey to the Nile's life-giving embrace. This magnificent river eventually led to the emergence of ancient Egyptian civilization. Number 49. Missing Capstone the continuing mystery of the Great Pyramid of Giza, a beautiful wonder of the ancient world, is heightened by its unexplained missing capstone. The pyramid, formerly crowned with a gleaming crown of bright white limestone, symbolized architectural splendor and spiritual importance. This missing summit, which is thought to connect the earthly monument to the celestial realms, allows the imagination to run wild. The lack of a capstone heightens the sense of mystery, provoking reflection on the intent and accuracy that led to its development. Number 48. Wigs and Shaved Heads Wigs and shaved heads became iconic choices for both genders in embracing ancient Egypt's sartorial legacy. Wigs, a synthesis of beauty and functionality, graced bare scalps, resonating with a timeless charm. Beyond the embrace of fashion, these hairpieces had a second purpose – sheltering heads from the unrelenting sun's touch. Wigs, as symbols of status and individuality, became a canvas for self-expression. Shaved heads were also a statement, encouraging unity and humility in the face of cosmic powers. Number 47. Peculiar Pets Ancient Egypt's peculiar pets encompassed a diverse range of creatures, from familiar domesticated cheetahs to more exotic companions like baboons, gazelles, and birds, with falcons taking a prominent place. Their remarkable fondness extended even to formidable beasts like lions, while the mongoose showcased their appreciation for creatures with snake-fighting abilities. The affectionate relationship extended to the Nile's gentle giants, hippos. Number 46. The Real Name The ancient Egyptians never referred to the land we now know as Egypt as such. The word Egypt comes from the ancient Greek name Aegyptos, which was taken from the name of the Egyptian capital of Memphis, Hikupta. The ancient Egyptians called their homeland Kemet, which translates as black land, because of the fertile black soil deposited by the Nile's periodic floods. This enhanced soil and the Nile's waters allowed for plentiful crops and nourishment for their population. Number 45. Sharing Food with the Deceased the tomb was a permanent home for the deceased and its K-spirit. An accessible tomb chapel allowed family, followers, and priests to honor the fallen while delivering appropriate gifts for the Ka, while a hidden burial chamber protected the mummy. Regular food was supplied inside the tomb chapel, spiritually devoured by the deceased and the living. Families lodged within ancestral tomb chapels for the yearly Feast of the Valley, a rebirth ritual. To mark the event, the living gladly rejoined with the departed, drinking beverages and dining in the darkness. Number 44. Sibling Marriages Certain Egyptian pharaohs engaged in sibling or half-sibling marriages. These marriages were meant to develop a queen's lifelong loyalty to her spouse and children, which she had learned as a kid. By arranging such weddings, appropriate partners were found for princesses who would otherwise stay unmarried limiting prospective heirs to the crown. These partnerships were also considered as a link to deities like Isis and Osiris, who were thought to have had similar unions. However, these marriages were not required, and great queens like Nefertiti became prominent despite their non-royal backgrounds. 
Number 43. Slaves did not build pyramids. The ancient historian Herodotus once claimed that the Great Pyramid was built by a massive army of 100,000 enslaved people, a depiction that modern filmmakers have adopted. However, this is not the case. According to archaeological studies, the Great Pyramid was built by a staff of 5,000 full-time paid laborers and up to 20,000 temporary workers. These guys were free men who were recruited via the national corvée system and served three to four months before returning home. As payment for their work, a temporary camp around the pyramid supplied them with shelter, food, and medical treatment. Number 42. Baboon Caught Criminals Animals were cherished and kept as pets by the ancient Egyptians. Baboons stood out for their unexpected abilities, including not just capturing criminals, but also aiding in fruit picking, beer production, and dancing. A traditional Egyptian artwork depicts a marketplace scenario in which officials release a baboon upon a robber who begs them to help as the baboon bites his leg, offering insight into the surprising function of baboons in law enforcement. Number 41. Egyptians used to drink beer. Brewing beer was both a culinary art and a cultural legacy in ancient Egypt. Egyptians steeped and partially germinated a mixture of barley and emmer wheat, to transform starches into fermentable sugars. This malted combination was then crushed and cooked, yielding wort, a delicious liquid. Herbs like thyme and dates were used to improve the flavor. The wort was then filtered and fermented in big clay jars. The resultant beer, once fermented, was sipped daily by individuals of all socioeconomic strata, giving food as well as a link to their deities. Number 40 mummified crocodiles. In ancient Egypt, crocodiles held a complex significance, often mummified and presented as offerings to the gods. Revered as symbols of power and fertility, these reptiles were associated with Sobek, the crocodile-headed deity representing both the Nile's ferocity and abundance. Crocodile mummies, carefully prepared with linen bandages and sometimes adorned with jewelry, were deposited in sacred sites like the Crocodile Pools of Kom Ombo. These offerings expressed devotion and sought favor from the gods while also serving as protective talismans. Number 39. Egyptian Toothpaste The ancient Egyptians used cow hooves, ashes, burnt eggshells, and pumice to clean their teeth. This mixture acted as a dental care solution, protecting teeth and gums from hygiene problems. They were then blended with water and applied with the finger. While this may not seem appealing, it supposedly worked back in the day to keep the gums healthy and the teeth shiny. This old method is a monument to their unique approach and illustrates the creativity of early civilizations in maintaining oral health. Number 38. Board Games Ancient Egyptians developed a liking for games in order to relieve boredom in their scorching atmosphere. Senate, a popular activity, combined aspects of knuckle bones and snakes and ladders. Participants make their movements on the board by casting little sticks. The addition of luck-altering tiles increased the interest. Even the young pharaoh Tutankhamun had an exquisite Senate board within his 1,922 coffin, thanks to Howard Carter's excavation. This persistent remnant exemplifies Egyptian society's deep-seated desire for leisure and enjoyment. Number 37. Egyptian Tattoos An often overlooked aspect of ancient Egyptian civilization is their advanced tattoo culture, which dates back over 4,000 years and is mostly practiced by women. Archaeological finds have revealed tattooed mummies from the 11th dynasty. Egyptian female tattoo art was portrayed as dots and swirls and was seen in ancient artwork on the lower breast, belly, and thighs. This continuing practice provides an enthralling peek into the cultural complexities of a time when body art carried meaning beyond simple beauty. Number 36. Egyptian Makeup In the field of cosmetics, ancient Egypt was a trendsetter, with a makeup practice that was accepted by all genders. The treatment, which was centered on the eyes and face, acted as both a barrier against the sun's harsh rays and a way of increasing attractiveness. They created simple deodorants from fragrant oils, flowers, and plants, attributing bad odor to divine wrath. 
Their creativity was highlighted by a characteristic green eye accent made of malachite stone. Coal, a treasured cosmetic, was created from a combination of crushed galena ore, soot, and oil, producing a rich black ointment that decorated their eyes and exemplified the ageless marriage of culture and aesthetics. Number 35. Egyptian Paper during a time when stone and clay tablets were widely used, ancient Egypt used papyrus as a pioneering medium for documentation and record-keeping. Recognizing its value, Egyptians concealed the technique of manufacture in order to utilize it in international commerce. Papyrus was made by removing strips from the fibrous pith of Nile-side papyrus reeds. Soaking and additional hammering softened and melded these pieces, which were then dried and glued for page construction. Papyrus of various grades, characterized by texture and weight, was used in this craftsmanship. This sophisticated use of papyrus demonstrated Egypt's skill and competence in recording and preserving the legacy of their culture. Number 34. Canopic Jars Mummification relied heavily on canopic jars. They were used to store and preserve the deceased's internal organs. These jars, stored alongside the individual, protected certain essential organs, the lungs, liver, intestines, and stomach. The soul's dwelling remained snuggled within the chest. Canopic jars grew from plain clay pots to luxury and sophistication under the Ptolemaic kingdom. They were converted into four deities, the sons of Horus with a baboon's head, protected the lungs, Duomutef with a jackal's head, protected the stomach, Imsiti with a human head, protected the liver, and Kabesanuf, with a falcon's head, protected the intestines, showing the profound union of spiritual beliefs and craftsmanship in ancient Egypt. Number 33. Pharaohs were obese. Contrary to artistic depictions, ancient Egyptian pharaohs were unlikely to be statuesque. Their sweet beer, wine, bread, and honey diet might have influenced their body. Mummy examinations indicate that numerous kings were overweight and unwell, may be suffering from diabetes. Queen Hatshepsut, a 50th century BC figure, is an example. Although her tomb portrays her as slender and athletic, historical evidence suggests she struggled with weight and hair loss. These discoveries show the disparity between artistic portrayal and the real health state of ancient Egyptian pharaohs, providing a more nuanced view of their physical well-being. Number 32. Tutankhamun's Strange Demise Tutankhamun's intriguing existence is buried in mystery. However, various experts hypothesize on his end. A popular notion among Egyptologists cites a hippopotamus bite as a possible reason. Historical evidence shows that the Egyptians enjoyed hunting these species for fun. Carvings from King Tut's tomb represent him launching a harpoon. If the kid pharaoh had a fondness for hunting dangerous wildlife, his demise could be linked to a mishap during one of these hunts. Number 31. Great Sphinx Nose The nose of the Great Sphinx, a distinguishing feature of Egypt's ancient monument, has long been cloaked in mystery and debate. Contrary to popular myth, historical documents show that Napoleon Bonaparte did not smash the nose of the Sphinx. The most likely reason for its missing tip is erosion over time, which has been compounded by elements such as weathering and probably even iconoclasm in previous eras. While Napoleon's men did use the Sphinx for target practice, there is no convincing evidence linking him to the nose's damage. Number 30. Cleopatra's Language Skills Cleopatra, Egypt's last queen, was well known for her superb linguistic abilities, which aided her diplomacy and power. Cleopatra was fluent in several languages, including Egyptian, Greek, and Latin, and she utilized her linguistic abilities to interact successfully with a wide range of individuals, from her own citizens to foreign dignitaries. Her ability to communicate effectively with people from diverse cultures aided in forming coalitions and negotiating diplomatic strategies, consolidating her political authority. Cleopatra's linguistic proficiency not only aided her authority, but also added to her mystique as a clever and fearsome ruler leaving an everlasting mark on history as a lady of intelligence and charm in the rich fabric of ancient Egypt. Number 29. Magical Amulets 
In ancient Egypt's spiritual realm, hieroglyphic magic maintained a mesmerizing spell. Hieroglyphs were viewed as supernatural powerhouses, capable of channeling the divine and influencing fate. These elaborate symbols were engraved on amulets and talismans, then weaved into spells and incantations to summon blessings, heal maladies, and protect from danger. Hieroglyphic magic was thought to be a conduit for summoning celestial powers, bestowing favor on the bearer, or releasing curses on opponents. The profound link between language, imagery, and supernatural power highlighted the profound significance of hieroglyphs in Egyptian culture. Number 28. Cosmetic Dentistry In the modern day, cosmetic dentistry has grown into a complex specialty, offering a variety of advanced procedures such as tooth whitening, veneers, and dental implants. However, cosmetic dentistry may be traced back to ancient Egypt when pioneering practices predicted current procedures. The ancient Egyptians had an incredible awareness of dental aesthetics, using gold wires to fix teeth and cleverly substituting lost ones with animal or human teeth. This early interest in improving smiles demonstrates an underlying human yearning for dental attractiveness. Number 27. Hidden Tombs The threat of grave thieves loomed big in ancient Egypt, leading to inventive, protective solutions, to thwart robbers, Elaborate ruses such as complex fake doors and secret rooms were methodically created within tombs. These devious architectural patterns were intended to confuse and dissuade intruders looking to steal priceless items and disrupt the everlasting resting places of the departed. The fake doors, decorated with symbolic decorations, lured robbers astray, while underground rooms concealed the genuine burial spot. These architectural accomplishments preserved the tomb's holiness and showed the Egyptians' strong belief in the afterlife. Number 26. Scented Cones Scented cones gave ancient Egyptian grandeur a perfumed twist. These exquisite adornments, made from fragrant mixes, wax, and fats, served as olfactory wonders as well as cooling agents. The perfumed cones progressively altered as the festivities progressed, emitting a symphony of enticing fragrances that floated through the air. The combination of carefully chosen perfumes not only delighted the senses, but also had a functional purpose, providing relief from the heat of the event. Scented cones went beyond simple adornment in this beautiful blend of luxury and practicality, becoming a monument to ancient society's talent in crafting immersive experiences that engaged both body and spirit. Number 25. Egyptian Pregnancy Tests Ancient pregnancy tests probed nature's mysteries. In antiquity, women looked to barley and wheat seeds for prophetic indications. The rite comprised moistening these seeds with their urine and waiting for life to emerge. Growing barley was hailed as a sign of approaching pregnancy, foreshadowing the delivery of a male heir. In contrast, the wheat's rapid sprouting anticipated the existence of a daughter in the womb. This approach captured the combination of folklore and knowledge of ancient civilizations since it was based on the connected concepts of fertility and gender prognostication. While these strange tests are far distant from current science, they reflect humanity's intrinsic interest and inventiveness in unraveling the conundrum of life's beginnings. Number 24. Divine Bees Bees buzzed across the fabric of ancient Egypt's symbols, divine and beloved. They decorated the mantles of monarchs as symbols of authority and divine connection. Pharaohs picked the bee as their symbol to represent both authority and heavenly touch, as a testament to their celestial link. The characteristic black and gold stripes and winged shapes engraved onto God's images, sarcophagi and artifacts reflected this sacred insect's presence. As emissaries of the sun god Ra, bees weaved a distinctive thread in the fabric of mythology. His tears gave birth to these beautiful animals, who created ambrosial honey, liquid gold that symbolized nature's wealth. Number 23. First Peace Treaty The 1258 BCE Treaty of Kadesh, which united the Egyptians and Hittites in ancient Concord, reverberates through the history of diplomacy. After centuries of hostility, this historic accord carved a route to peace. It was sealed with diplomacy's ink, and transcended time to last millennia. This landmark declaration, carved on the pages of history, 
bears witness to humanity's desire for peace. The Treaty of Kadesh stands out as a lighthouse, highlighting the power of discussion and compromise to cool the fires of conflict and securing its place as an everlasting cornerstone of peacemaking throughout cultures. Number 22. Two Lands The ancient Egyptians divided their country into two different realms, ebony-hued black earth and bright red earth. The black dirt, created by the Nile's periodic inundation, provided fertile silt for abundant crops and healthy cattle. In sharp contrast, the red soil represented the parched desert, with its reddish rock topography unsuitable for life's nourishment. This law was so stark that a person could walk across it, one foot on the fertile black dirt and the other on the barren red expanse. This vivid distinction highlighted the complex interaction of components forming Egyptian life. Number 21. The Purpose of Pyramids Many people do not know the real reason why pyramids exist. Some suggest that the pyramids reflected the sun and made it a powerful irrigation tool. However, the renowned Egyptian pyramids served as royal tombs, symbolizing the descending of sunlight to earth. They symbolize ancient Egyptian beliefs in the afterlife and are built on the Nile's west bank, aligned with the setting sun. These pyramids were timeless testaments to a civilization's strong affinity with cosmic energies and veneration for the eternal repose of princely souls. Number 20. The Original Architect Imhotep, an Egyptian priest, was the actual creator of the pyramids, a far cry from the mystical depiction in the Mummy franchise. While the name Imhotep may conjure up images from the movies, it was a popular moniker at the time. This Imhotep, despite being a knowledgeable and influential character, lacked magical skills and immortality. The idea that he was cursed for treachery is baseless. On the other hand, his posthumous achievements aroused respect, with the ancient Egyptians eventually deifying him owing to his considerable contributions and intellectual brilliance, solidifying his reputation as a cherished deity in their pantheon. Number 19. Burying People Alive the ancient Egyptians practiced the practice of entombing persons alive in ancient times. Initially, several early pharaohs buried their servants beside them, imagining their future servitude. Later monarchs used a different method, creating shapti figures that looked like their servants and placing them in graves to play similar tasks in the afterlife. Number 18. Entrance to Afterlife the ancient Egyptians believed that not everyone could enter the afterlife. They, like other religions, believed in posthumous reckoning. Anubis, the god, measured the heart's weight against the feather of truth prior to admission into the afterlife. Should the heart be heavier, the crocodile-like entity Amit would swallow the soul, resulting in permanent loss. On the other hand, a lighter heart deserved Anubis's direction to Osiris in the world beyond confirming a position in the afterlife. Number 17. Immortality The ancient Egyptians believed in a more modest form of immortality. They believed that persons lived on after death as long as their memory was preserved in spoken speech. To that purpose, egregious criminals faced a heavy penalty that included expunging their names from records and prohibiting their mention. An erasure of this magnitude meant they would cease to exist in any form. Number 16. Egyptian Calendar The current calendar is based on the ancient Egyptian calendar, which was based on a 365-day solar framework similar to today's version. The naming of days and months differs the most. The Egyptian calendar was created to foresee the yearly flood of the Nile, which played a critical role in defining their agricultural interests. Number 15. Stone Pillows a single pillow sufficed for rest in ancient Egypt. Egyptians made pillows from natural materials such as stone, wood, or pottery, typically embellished with beautiful motifs. These pillows were more than just sleeping aids. They represented prestige and comfort, demonstrating the complexities of Egyptian civilization. The wealthy slept on luxurious pillows, while others slept on basic equivalents. Each cushion reflected the craftsmanship and inventiveness of the time, encapsulating the spirit of Egyptian life. Number 14. Lost Language of Egypt Ancient Egyptian was inactive for decades, 
dying out around the Hellenistic era when Greek, Latin, and Arabic surpassed it. Religious changes, such as the rise of Christianity and Islam, degraded pagan practices and broke ties to ancestral beginnings. As a result, scholarly study of this old dialect, a relic of pagan history, was intentionally suppressed or obliterated. In 1799, researchers discovered the Rosetta Stone, which served as a portal for increased understanding of the ancient Egyptian language. Number 13. Sacred Cats Cats were considered sacred by the ancient Egyptians, owing to their prowess as natural hunters, capable of defeating deadly serpents. This predatory ability translated into the protection of houses and families. It was usual to own a cat as a sign of this protective link. This adoration spread to religion, where the guardian goddess Bastet became entwined with feline symbols. The herding cat triggered grief, causing the mummification and burial of countless felines in order to ensure their passage to the afterlife. Notably, herding a cat had serious implications. In ancient Egypt, such an act was punishable by capital punishment. Number 12. Pharaoh, Akhenaten, and Aten Pharaoh Akhenaten began a solitary endeavor in ancient times, foregoing the reverence of several deities in favor of absolute devotion to the deity Aten. He abolished customary practices by punishing priests, incinerating sacred shrines, and shifting the capital from Thebes to Amarna. After his demise, the Egyptians restored faith in ancestral gods. They demolished Akhenaten's monuments, erased his name from public records, and erased his presence from inscriptions, reintroducing their previous beliefs and rites. Number 11. Pharaoh did not mean king. Rather than being interpreted as king, the title Pharaoh really meant great house. The title refers to the divine spirit within a human vessel, depicting the Pharaoh as a god in mortal garb, and is based on the ancient Egyptians' belief of Pharaohs as manifestations of the deity Horus. Number 10. Egyptians did not use sugar. Sugar was unknown to the ancient Egyptians. The use of sugar to sweeten meals has not yet spread to Europe and Africa. Sugar did not cross continents from Asia until the aftermath of Alexander the Great's conquests due to Indian traders who followed in his footsteps. Previously, the ancient Egyptians and Mediterranean tribes used honey to sweeten their culinary masterpieces. Number 9. Eye Treatment Eye infections were widespread among the ancient Egyptians, requiring a variety of unusual treatments. Bactericidal paint and medications extracted from human brains were among the methods used. A human brain was split into two halves to make this cure. One half was applied to the injured eye at night, mixed with honey, and the dried second half was utilized the next morning. The source of these brains is unknown. However, it is hoped that they were not obtained in a damaging manner. However, it shows the Egyptians' innovative approach and willingness to experiment in addressing eye afflictions. Number 8. Egyptians played bowling. Bowling had its origins in ancient Egypt when a game similar to modern bowling had ten stone-like balls thrown at a ground-level pit. Unlike today's alleys and pin-toppling techniques, this ancient Egyptian game was similar to ten-pin bowling, although with different components. It was known as the Egyptian game and thrived in Egypt's Fayum area, around 90 kilometers south of Cairo. This ancient game took place in a vast area similar to current bowling lanes, combining elements from bowling, billiards, and lawn bowls. Number 7. Egyptians used locks. Ancient Egyptian locks and keys provide an enthralling peek into this civilization's sophisticated engineering and security practices. Among the various locks they used, hardwood pin tumbler locks gained prominence and are regarded as early examples of mechanical locking systems. These locks were made of wood and consisted of a hardwood bolt that fit perfectly into a doorframe socket. The bolt featured numerous pins of varied lengths that, when closed, properly aligned with holes in the socket, immobilizing the bolt and fastening the door. To unlock, a one-of-a-kind wooden or metal key with notches or teeth matching the locations of the pins was inserted. Turning the key raised the pins to precise heights, allowing the bolt to travel freely and the door to be unlocked. Number 6. Birth Bricks 
Childbirth held profound reverence in ancient Egyptian society, regarded as a sacred and mystical occurrence. The somber awareness of childhood mortality underscored its importance. Amid labor, women would squat above Abydos birth bricks, which likely varied in material and style across households. Affluent families possessed superior bricks adorned with intricate artistry, trusting this would ensure robust offspring. These birth bricks boasted embellishments, notably featuring depictions of the birthing mother and her attendants, a captivating aspect of their design. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. This strange depiction of some sort of ancient Egyptian ceremony has confused netizens around the globe. The picture shows several barely dressed women admiring a man who seems to be a king or maybe a famous warrior. Do you have any idea what this could be? Let us know in the comments. Number 5. Largest Pyramid While Egypt's pyramids are well known across the world, they are not the biggest. The Pyramid of the Feathered Serpent in Mexico has that honor, spanning more than 200 square kilometers. In comparison, the Great Pyramid of Giza covers around 21 square kilometers. Despite this, the Great Pyramid towers over the Pyramid of the Feathered Serpent, rising 137 meters to the latter's 66 meters. Number 4. Egyptians Used Laxatives Laxatives played an important role in ancient Egyptian everyday life since they were essential to their health and beauty regimen. Egyptians used laxatives three times a month, which was an important detoxifying practice. Aside from sickness prevention, this routine fostered a slim and lovely figure, which was highly valued in their culture. The Egyptians were fond of purification ceremonies, according to renowned historian Herodotus. Their preferred laxative, made from castor oil, functioned as a flexible treatment for a variety of health issues. Surprisingly, no disease seemed to be beyond the reach of their beloved laxatives. This practice exemplified their attitude to removing diseases in order to hasten recovery and achieve complete purity. Number 3. Mourning for a Cat In ancient Egypt, the death of a cat was considered a real catastrophe, comparable to the loss of a beloved person. The Egyptians' attachment to their feline friends was so strong that losing a deceased cat was equivalent to losing a kin, even a husband. The household would jointly mourn the beloved cat's loss, following mourning customs. One particular practice was shaving brows, which served as a visual symbol of mourning. Egyptians mourned until their brows regrew. Number 2. Holy City of Crocodiles The adoration of Sobek, the crocodile deity, was the center of a whole religion in ancient Crocodilopolis. A holy crocodile named Sukkus was enshrined within this spiritual nexus. This famous reptile became the focus of pilgrimages, attracting believers from all over the world who traveled to pay tribute. Sukkus, adorned in lavish gold and gems, was a sight to behold. Devoted priests painstakingly cared for and met its requirements. Pilgrims anxious to show their respect made food gifts to the revered crocodile, which priests ceremonially delivered. The priests approached with awe, pulling open the huge jaws to allow the ingestion of offerings given in its honor. Number 1. War for Hippo Pharaoh Sekenenretau The second loved hippos. This love prompted him to keep a pool for them to enjoy fun moments. His love for them reached no limitations, culminating in a last sacrifice on their behalf. Egypt was divided during this period, with the powerful kingdom of Hyksos, governed by Pharaoh Apopi. Sekinenra Tao, a weaker prince, faced the humiliation of Apopi's demand to expel the adored hippos due to their noisy loudness. Regardless of the distance, Sekinenra's unbounded love for his hippos turned this demand into an affront not only to himself, but also to his treasured friends. He was certain that it was an issue worthy of fighting. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.